Hi there, this is the Labcast for Santicnet 7. It's the latest version of Santicnet, this uh, our common sense knowledge base for uh, sentiment analysis. We started this project 10 years ago and every two years we release the new version. So this Labcast is really about what's new with Santicnet 7. Uh, you may wondering why do we need uh, a common sense knowledge base once uh, since we have transformers uh, they have already achieved human like accuracy on many NLP tasks but human like accuracy doesn't mean human like intelligence transformers despite very good for classification still have uh, a lot of limitations. In fact, we may still be light years away from emulating the structure of the human brain, given that it's in the same ballpark as the number of galaxies in the observable universe. But in this work, we really focus on two limitations. Uh, the first is how similarity is calculated in a vector space um, of concepts, for example, instead of looking at distances like cosine similarity or Euclidean distance, which are uh, metrics that are topology agnostic in a sense because they just focus on the distance between two data points in the vector space. We instead look at really the structure of the vector space and so look at the distance between concepts that uh, belong to the same manifold, for example. So you can find more information about this on the, on the paper. Limitation number two is what is known as the symbol grounding problem. So transformers and many other deep neural networks are very good at telling you what is similar to what, um, but they don't really tell you what is the meaning behind those words that for the machine are just a sequence of letters, meaningless sequence of letters. And if you pick up a, an English dictionary, it doesn't help because you will still have these semantic loops where things are defined in terms of others and vice versa. So this is a problem that is, has been studied a lot by the field of semiotics, uh, which studies how a symbol that can be like an icon or even the sequence of letters uh, signifies is uh, connected in our mind to the signify the, the real meaning behind that sequence of letters that we learn by brute force. There is no other way to learn to guess that this sequence of letters uh, resembles somehow a lion. This doesn't look like a lion. You could see you could say that for an icon, but definitely not for words. And this is exactly the problem that machines have when they're trying to interpret natural language. So we try to reduce the symbol grounding problem by uh, by generalizing uh, concepts and and multi words and multi word expressions into primitives. Here you can see how we have this hierarchical structure where uh, name entities are generalized in terms of uh, concepts by using linguistic patterns such as uh, is a pattern or Hurst patterns. And then concepts are generalized by using um, deep learning into specific primitives. And primitives in turn are defined uh, using logic um, to really understand what's the meaning behind it, each of these primitives. So we, we use the decomposition approach that is similar to defining quantities in physics uh, so that, for example, speed is defined in terms of time and space. Here is an example of how um, some action verbs are generalized. For example, shorten is defined as shrink length and shrink in turn is defined as decreased in terms of decrease. And then for decrease that it's one of those super primitives, we have a logic definition. So these logic definitions um, basically are trying to get away from language to have some sort of explanation of what's really happening there. So decrease, for example, is expressed as the shift from a state where X was whole in, to a state in which X uh, has decreased in terms of quantity. So this is really helping you to go beyond 
the statistics associated to words into something that is more similar to natural language understanding because now we can better understand what's happening in the operating environment. This is uh, generate, for example, tells me that um, something that wasn't existing before now is there in the operating environment. So this is really to, um, this can be really useful for uh, applications like dialogue system or scene understanding, for example. In the context of sentiment analysis, we use this for explainable sentiment analysis. So first we generalize expressions like these into a verb primitive like this, and same you can do for nouns and adjectives, so that um, you have a lot of expressions that can be uh, generalized into abstract enemies, so that we really focus on the primitives that um, on which we can then perform reasoning to understand what is the current state of affairs, uh, for example, to um, to predict a specific polarity associated with this expression. This is not only useful for sentiment analysis, but also for other uh, NLP tasks, such as disambiguating um, prepositions, for example. By generalizing what comes after uh, with, we can understand how uh, with is used in that specific context. And then, as I mentioned, this is mostly useful for um, for advanced reasoning, such as cases uh, where you have to understand what's happening, what's really happening there. So, uh, if I take a verb action like um, murder. Uh, statistically, I can calculate how it's statistically negative, but then um, if I have some sort of definition for murder, then I can understand that, for example, in the in the current state of in the current operating environment, uh, whatever has been murdered, whoever has been murdered, no longer exists. So this uh, is once again a way to step beyond uh, statistical natural language and, this, and natural language processing. Uh, but this, of course, is only a small part, is only the beginning. We're mostly focusing on what is a specific action and what is the outcome of that action on the object. But then there are many more questions to answer, such as who, where, when, and how, which goes under the umbrella of semantic role labeling. And until now, these were questions that were, were very difficult to answer because these is part of um, our own common sense knowledge or tacit knowledge that we we bring in when we're trying to understand the sentence. But now maybe with the advent of the metaverse, we have the chance to uh, train uh, our systems uh, in there in order for them to um, get this kind of tacit knowledge or common sense knowledge. So this and other works you can find on our publication page and you're also welcome to use our resources. Sentignet is freely available on our download page. There's also some um, code like, for example, the generalization code uh, that we used for discovering primitives is on GitHub. And finally, you can also use our uh, multilingual APIs. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.